The hardest part about JavaScript is not the programming language itself, but it's in fact how you can write better clean code with JavaScript. Now, I have seen some mistakes that a lot of developers make time and time again, and it doesn't matter if you are a beginner developer or a advanced developer, chances are you have made one of these mistakes. So in this specific video, let's cover it all. A lot of developers don't fully understand and grasp exactly how the default import and export work necessarily, and that can cause a lot of confusion and, and they end up making a lot of mistakes. So let's take a look at some of those mistakes here. For example, over here, I'm using Code Sandbox and Code Sandbox is an online development platform. You can essentially code React, Next.js, and several different apps. It also gives you like a cool domain here. Whenever you make any changes in the Code Sandbox repo, it will automatically apply it here as well. So for example, here, I have a file called as CardUtils. The CardUtils has two functions. One is get card total and get card. And we have a very simple card here. And you can imagine that this specific file is quite huge. with a lot of different card functionality, but we won't get into that. So in this case, I have two exports here. Export cons get card total and export cons get card. Now, for example, if I go here into app and essentially import it. Now, there are two different ways to import this file. Now, if I just say, so this is card utils, I'm going to call utils from dot slash card utils. And then let's log it as well and say utils. Now, the minute I hit save, you can see that utils is actually undefined. And this is a very common mistake that a lot of devs make. Because there is no default export in this specific file, there is no default to provide. That's why when we try to import it, we cannot import it necessarily. So a workaround for this is you can say dot slash as utils and save it. And now suddenly you have the two functions that we have exported from our card utils file. But this wouldn't be true if we just were to use utils directly and, and not use this syntax here. Similarly, if you do want to pass in a default, so for example, let's say I want to say get card is default. I can say export default get card. And then if I go back to calling utils here, then you can see that utils does have the get card function. And whenever I want to call, let's say get card total, I can just say get card total right here. Now, if I were to just print out get card total onto the page, I should see a value here. And I need to close this. Now you can see that two appears on the web page. This is the thing about default exports and regular exports, for example. And now by passing, by specifically saying that I want to import this specific file, I can easily import get card total. And I don't even necessarily need to do this at all as well. Now that is the beauty of using imports and exports, but this is a common mistake that a lot of de developers make in general. Now, as you go through this video, if you want to learn more about the strategies of becoming a better JavaScript developer, then check out the link in the description below where I have provided a free template for you to basically take this learning to the next level. I have included a bunch of resources and things that will truly help you become a better JavaScript developer. So check it out if you're interested. Now over here, I'm using a specific VS Code plugin called as Quokka. It allows you to run JavaScript code and it makes debugging a lot simpler. So in our case, let's use that throughout this video. If you are a JavaScript developer, then we do have a lot of data structures that are easily mutable. That's why it's extremely important that we understand the difference between mutability and immutability. A lot of JavaScript developers do make this mistake where they don't fully understand the concept of immutability and mutability and end up modifying the global values. Let's take a look at an example. Now, over here, I have a mutable array. For example, the array has one to three and I'm pushing the value four to it. So if I just say mutable array over here on line five, it is one, two, three, four. So for example, I'm pushing the value in mutable array called four. Now this array has one, two, three, four values. Now I can easily modify the index of one, which is two to be five, right? Index of one is two and which is 
I'm assigning it to five. And then when I console log mutable array, it's suddenly one, five, three, four, and one, two, three. Because arrays are mutable, we now have overridden that value and we have changed the original value of the mutable array. Then we have essentially lost the original value. Now this in fact right here is called mutation. But let's say as we start scaling our JavaScript application, you if you use just mutability, then it's going to be a problem for you because you need to remember in all the different places that object has specifically been modified. That is why the concept of immutability comes in play where whenever you create or modify a specific object, then a new object or a new value gets created. Now over here, if I were to do the same thing, I want to modify the mutable array and assign it to five, I could do the same thing with a immutability function that is provided out of the box called as map. There are also other functions such as map, filter and reduce as well. But over here, I can just say mutable array dot map array. And then this specific map function, then I can easily say mutable array one, then I can just say if array and I need the index of the array over here. So the second parameter is the index. So I can just say if the index and change the value, which is array of index will be five, for example, right here. Or I could just say array of two, doesn't matter because since it's already protected with the if condition and I'm just going to return the rest of the array. It could be array equals five because this is the actual value of the specific item. Now you can see that this is one, two, three, four still because this specific function needs to be assigned to a variable to preserve that specific value. This in case shows that mutable array did not get modified, even though we tried to assign it and loop through it. So for example, I can just say new array. And if we print out new array, for example, and you can see this specific value is one, two, five, four. And that is in fact the beauty of it. In here, we don't need to necessarily worry about changing the original copy of the data. Now you can imagine that as your code scales, this is going to be really important for you because your original values won't necessarily change, only you're creating new copies of it. But this is a common mistake that a lot of JavaScript developers make. Now, the next thing is not necessarily a mistake, but more so an enhancement, depending on how you see it. But as your code scales, it's extremely important that you start using what I'm going to recommend to you next so that your code is more readable. So for example, over here, we have a if and else condition. It's a very simple function is dog friendly. So if dog's name is Kobe, which is Kobe is my dog, then you would, I would return a string called friendly else return not friendly. And whenever we log anything here, so for example, if I log is dog friendly and as a function, it's going to essentially return whether the dog is friendly or not. And this will just console log that the dog is not friendly. Now, if and else is totally fine. And in a lot of cases, you should definitely be using if and else condition. If you do have a lot of conditions in your if and else, but in this case, a very simple function and a lot of simple functionality like this exists in our code base. We could easily turn this into a ternary. So for example, I'm just going to copy if the dog is Kobe and then just return dog is Kobe, then friendly else not friendly. And we can get rid of line three to seven all because of that. Now, as your code scales, as your code base scales, this becomes really important because you don't want to essentially say the same thing in a much lengthier way. So this makes it a lot more readable. A lot of JavaScript developers don't fully understand what does implied mean in code. For example, in this case, if let's say is doc friendly is in fact a Boolean function, so it returns a true or a false value. So instead of returning a string friendly and not friendly, we want something like this, where if the dog is Kobe, then it needs to return true, else return false. Now, since I'm not passing anything to is dog friendly, that's why the dog friendly is false. But let's say if I pass in the parameter Kobe, then is dog friendly is in fact true. When I see a code like this, it immediately becomes obvious to me that that specific developer don't fully understand how what implied code means. And in this case, by returning 
if dog is equal to Kobe and returning the value of it, the return type itself is going to be a Boolean. So we don't necessarily need to provide this at all. This just makes it a lot more readable instead of saying if it's true or false because it's already implied. I've seen this type of a code a lot in several code bases. So make sure that you check for something like this because this is easily something you can do to improve your code. The first mistake I see a lot of devs make is how functions work. Let's take a look at an example. This specific function will return a random integer and provided the min and max, it's going to be inclusive of those specific parameters. So for example, I could say zero to 10, then that's the random integer that it will return us between one and 10. If you console log it, it will return undefined right here in line. So you can see the values right away. But at the same time, you can also see at the bottom as undefined as well. The mistake that a lot of JavaScript devs make is that they will not return the specific function. And you're invoking that specific function, then you need to return that function. This is a very common mistake. In fact, a lot of advanced devs as well will run a lot of their code and forget to return. So this is something that you should never forget. Make sure you return your function if you want the value from that function. One of the other mistakes that a lot of JavaScript developers make is that they don't fully understand what asynchronous means. So let's take a look at an example here. Now we have a really simple function called as fetch data. And in this specific function, fetch data, it returns a new promise. And that returns a set timeout, which essentially means that after this specific time span, this specific value will get resolved. Now, when I console log fetch data, you will see that the promise is in fact pending. Now, this is a promise and promise goes through a different life cycle, wherein first it's pending, then it's fulfilled or it can get rejected. But the fact that it's pending means that we have not received the value yet. But because this is a promise, we do need to use a dot dense syntax. So in that case, we can just wait for the promise. And in that case, we could just say await fetch right here. And now I can just assign it to a variable, to data. And the minute I say, what is data? You can see that data is in fact fetch data from right here. Now you could use the syntactic sugar with await over here, or you could just use fetch data dot then syntax. But knowing that we do need to wait for that specific value because it's asynchronous. It's not gonna just return fetch data directly. We gotta wait for it. And this is the specific syntax for it. So knowing that a lot of your code is going to be asynchronous is very important. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I would love to know from you if there's something new that you learned in this specific video. And if you would love to add any of the common mistakes that you have seen that you make or someone else makes, please comment below and let me know. All right, thank you so much. Bye for now.